Who uh, knows? Like, you'll see the counter, and all you have to do is point it to him. So you did it now? Yeah, it started right now. Video tape. It was tape. clear that they Thank were, you. Um, it was an essential item. And so, uh, so I started uh, a couple of years ago, and it was still wasn't, uh, it wasn't obvious that it was going to take off because it seemed like this kind of uh, a very delayed pregnancy. It was like every year you thought it was going to happen, and it didn't happen. So, uh, every month actually. But anyway, but it has now, and I think everyone kind of feels it with both in the press, like what you guys read about, uh, and it seems like something's coming out all the time. And that, what you guys see, is just the tip of the iceberg. So, uh, so what I discussed uh, back in the spring uh, is that it's just kind of like the basic uh, concepts of what bull marketing is, what it entails, what can you do with it, um, and so this time around, uh, Joe and I talked, we said, okay, well, let's, uh, assuming that people are a little more savvy now with things, let's talk a little bit more about um, specific aspects of mobile marketing. So what we have today, then, is a group of, uh, of people who are, I would call them all pioneers in the mobile uh, marketing space. And they are doing things that are all going to jump, skyrocket, literally, um, and, you know, these guys are smart, so if, you know, they're doing the right things, and if, you know, if, if with a little bit of luck, then they're going to be, you know, major players as this uh, industry moves on. So I want to just talk a little bit about what each of them are doing, and then we'll let them talk more about specifically the, the company and, and their background. So, um, first, uh, Danny Sanchez is the uh, uh, CTO for Connect. And Connect does uh, uh, more generically, it's called 2D codes, uh, but uh, he works specifically with QR codes. And I think has everyone seen a QR code? Yeah, okay. a little part of it, thing. yeah it's a two-dimensional barcode. So anyway, uh, and there's the, this has really exploded in just the last six months, months, right? Yeah. So and like you're saying, it's like you can't look anywhere. Before it was just like in Wired magazines and like that, but now it's like it seems to be everywhere. Um, you know, whether it's uh, you know something that's in, in Sports Illustrated or in entertainment <laughs> magazines uh, or you know in a, a billboard that you see. It seems on business to be, cards. Yeah. On business cards. Yeah, I have one of my. I want a business card. I'll open it. So anyway, the, uh, the QR codes. QR codes are. A, an extremely um, powerful way of, 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 of getting the consumer to connect with your brand. And I'll, I'll let Danny tell you more about that. But just know that that's something, the reason why uh, we have Danny here is because he uh, represents uh, lead, leadership, thought leadership, and technology leadership in Chicago, this area that's been, that is exploding and is going to continue to grow. Now we have uh, Chris Weiss, and he leads a company called Juno Wallet. And um, Juno Wallet is, um, I'm not going to get this, he's got like whole free dollars around, but I consider you guys uh, mobile loyalty. And everyone knows that loyalty is a huge thing for, for anyone who's in business today. Um, typically, the loyalty follows the 90 10 rule, where 90% of the people who are the most loyal make up 90% of your business. And so to, to have a solution that helps bring people who are into your loyalty club and then also um, satisfy your, you know, your current loyalty base. It's, it's a huge thing. And so, and that's the loyalty club on your card is a, is a piece of what we call M Commerce, which is mobile commerce, a transaction of, uh, of currency of, of some form or another, whether it's loyalty or actual cash, uh, using your phone. So, this is another area that's just going to explode. Uh, and Sure, more on that too. And then we have a third person who is on route, and he is working for a company. Uh, can't see it. Uh, he's working for a company called Sample Saint. And Sample Saint is another in another hot area of mobile industry called mobile coupon. And I, has anyone ever used mobile coupon before? Okay. So uh, they say now that uh, about. 8% of people have used the mobile coupon, but 30-some percent of people want to. 
And so it's uh, so there's an enormous gap there uh, in, the, in, the, in the industry. And uh, and what is really unique about what uh, what uh, Lawrence is doing at Campus Saint is that the, the easy solution for mobile couponing is to is to provide you with text with either uh, a code or just you show on your phone and you go to some retailer, whether it's your flower shop or a restaurant restaurant or uh, office mats, something like that, and you give them a code and they enter it into their system and it redeems whatever the value is, right? That's the easy part. That actually represents one eighth of all the coupons that are redeemed. So out of three billion coupons, one eighth of them are redeemed in that way. And that's probably what everyone has done here, right? So the nut that hasn't been cracked is the one that uh, I think uh, San Jose has a good chance of doing is the other seven piece of that pie, which is the coupons from the brands like Kraft and uh, Procter and Gamble and uh, Hot Average and Sara Lee, those guys, you know, they want their coupons redeemable at any retailer that you go to. And that is hard, much, much, much harder. But, you know, one eighth versus seven eighths, you can see the size of the prize is incredibly much more uh, bigger, much bigger than <laughs> than what we're doing today. So, anyway, that was all. All three of those are, are I think, people are all aware of them today, but they're all going to skyrocket. And so that's what we have today. To have. And with that, uh, I'm going to let uh, Danny talk a little bit more about snacks and what they're doing, uh, and then for Chris, hopefully. software engineer years ago, um, you know, client server stuff, and was there at the, really, when the internet really started to take root, and immediately saw the value of where the future was going, so I shifted quickly to, uh, to the internet, and did a lot of startups, uh, worked my way through the ranks, and we were doing cloud computing way back, you know, 10 years ago, it was pretty interesting stuff. My last corporate job was uh, director of technology at Monster.com. Uh, did that for about four years and then left the company to start my own business. Uh, I've always had my eye on mobile. I've always known that, you know, from my, uh, the first time I bought an iPad, here, this was years ago again, <laughs> an iPad was a Windows CE based uh, you know, device where you could do Word and Excel and PowerPoint and email. And it was an amazing device at the time, and you could see that this was going to transition into your phone. And the phones were the big, you know, palms at the time, with the giant keyboards, and you know, but you could see the future. And, uh, so I've always had my eye on that. Once I left, I did, started my own consulting firm, and did that for a while. Did a lot of big projects, uh, but they were still in the web and uh, you know, desktop base. Years ago, I started really doing research because I wanted to go somewhere where you know I saw a big opportunity and something I had a lot of passion for. And, you know, I'm a Star Trek fan, so those little devices I knew were going to come to fruition. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's coming to um, So, I'm not too sure it's too far off, basically. Not, not too far off. <coughs> we'll see. Um, but, so, I, uh, I started doing a lot of research. I started doing a lot of research on what was happening overseas, and particularly in Japan, where the mobile market is really you know, five, six years ahead of where we are. You know, they're a smaller country, infrastructure, you know, AT&T could actually do a good job there, uh, you know, in a short amount of time. You don't know AT&T that well. Well, maybe not. <laughs> you're AT&T mobile. They just uh, got dead last in terms of uh, satisfaction. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because they were AT&T. And that's an improvement. <laughs> So uh, I stumbled upon these uh, two bunch of workouts uh, about a year and a half ago, and uh, you know I I immediately saw the value because it's it's a very practical technology. You know it, it does something very practical. It's very inexpensive to implement. Tell, tell them specifically. You know, I think people have seen sure. this before, maybe used it, but tell them specifically what what the value or uh, the clients that you have. Sure. 
So what we've been able to do is really, you know, one of our taglines during our pitches is that we're, we're able to really turn what traditionally would be a, a, uh, an impression, you know, uh, an impression, one-way communication, exactly. We were able to turn that into an interaction. And so that's where the value of what Connect does as a company, and that's what we, uh, we started to do in about a year, a little over a year ago, we started to lay the foundation of the software that would allow businesses to turn their impressions into interactions. You know, a lot of people say print instead, but it's not even die overnight. A lot of print advertising, which a lot of dollars are spent in print. And that runs anywhere from newspapers to direct mailers, postcards, to businesses. And what we're able to do as a company is provide a lot more value to that print advertising. So, uh, what traditionally would be an interaction, a page turn, well, that's a really cool full page ad. <coughs> now we can interact with that and engage that consumer immediately. And depends on the implementation of what the goal of that company is, and you're able to engage that consumer and immediately begin that relationship. Uh, so in a lot of, uh, a, lot of a lot of publications that traditionally you were spending money that you weren't sure what your return on that investment was, uh, we're now able to really track that uh, a lot better and really start to give you metrics on what your investments are. So, in a nutshell, what we do at Connect is we also saw a lot of ad implementations. But what we're trying to do is ensure that it's a, a good implementation all the way through. So we take companies every, uh, from creating the content pages, you know, what the offer is, what it looks like, it's optimized maybe for Blackberries all the way to an iPhone, you know, and we're able to do that, generate the codes, the QR codes, all the analytics, and give them a tool, a dashboard where they can track this stuff in real time. And they, you know, we, we also consider it a little bit of a broadcast system. Because these codes, once they're out there, you know, that picture frame was a QR code, well, you can come in here every day, scan it, and get a different message. And you can do that in real time. So what we're able to do at Connect is really enhance and augment what they're already doing, which is spending a lot of money in pressure. So now we're able to take that impression and turn it into the And just for reference, like when uh, at PG, you know, we would, you know, the standard, industry standard CPM uh, rate is $24. Yeah. Right? So we were paying $24 for CPM. Um, and, uh, for grip. Okay. And then uh, we would spend anywhere between 10 to 30 times that amount for CPMI, cost per thousand uh, interactions. So it just gives you an idea of the value of an impression versus the value of an interaction. Uh, and of course, in interactions, there's multiple levels of it too, but uh, the fact that you're getting that kind of give and take is, is, is a major step. So, but uh, tell us uh, about what you're doing to go on and uh, some of the applications that you're using right now. Cool. Um, thanks for everyone coming on. I know that uh, with cold weather, it's hard to get out of the house. But uh, definitely uh, good to see everyone here. Juno Wallet started 351 years ago. One of the biggest things that, that we can be proud of is our culture. Uh, we are probably known for our Silicon Valley as being the most aggressive, fastest, fastest moving mobile app out there. We've had more uh, improvements and reiterations of our app in 351 days than most companies go through in three or four years. And part of it is because our development team focuses on daily success. Uh, like a lion in the jungle, we look for our food every single day, and that food we hunt for. We hunt for that success. Now, Juno Wallet, what are they? You hit it right on the head. If you go to Japan, your phone is your wallet, it's your car keys, it's your, what's the third one you said? So it's your, it's your phone, your wallet, and your keys. Okay, so yeah, it's your phone, your wallet, and your keys. The only thing Juno Wallet doesn't do currently, which I think will add in the future, is start your car and turn it on. So right now, inside of Juno Wallet today, uh, who here likes getting gift cards during holidays? 
I'm going to end of commercial. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what's interesting is that uh, Chris talks about sort of like the Chris talks about the intersection of mobile and social media, which is another area that's, that's uh, pretty hot right now. And, um, but this is an area that actually people really haven't quite cracked yet. So you, got, you do have the whole Groupon phenomenon, which is you know kind of social and 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 mobile, and you've got, you know, Facebook with places, you know, trying to do the same thing, and um, all the phone squares and koalas. Um, but the reality is that the world is, you know, it, you know, people want to be social digitally, but then mobile really is um, what connects you back to reality. And I think this was something that someone said, um, I don't know if it was, um, I don't know if it was Google, the speaker from Google, or, or one of the speakers from Walgreens and he basically said that, you know, basically mobile takes digital, takes it and brings it back into the real world. So, and that's really that, that connection there, which is really problem. So, I think uh, one of the biggest things too about that connection is to expand a little bit. Who here, seriously, if, if you've got anyone in your life and that you care about, who here can raise their hand and say, it actually feels good to give, it feels good to do a favor for a friend or a loved one or some family. Give me an example of someone you love that you would do something for, <coughs> or an example of something you've done for them. Okay. Your parents, yes. I mean, think about it. It feels better to give than it is to receive. And an example of mine, my dad's moving to my home, right? And he's traveling to Philadelphia to get home. My mom uh, uh, had surgery on her foot, so she's like stuck on the couch, right? They watch, uh, you know, top 10 places to get food. And like restaurants, like, uh, what's the guy? That, uh, guy Fury or, uh, Adam, uh, got Man vs. Food, best program of all time. <laughs> yeah, Shoot right. away to commercial for Man vs. Food. Watch it on the travel channel. So my dad's going to Philly where this, you know, the top nine place for barbecue is. And he's like, no, I really want to go there, but I'm going to this deal. And so it's like, I can go on computer, you know, send an email of all the directions, places to go. He can just pull it up on his iPhone and give directions on how to get there. And then now today he's able to go there, send me a picture, and be like, hey, thanks, great barbecue. Did he get barbecue? Yeah. Ribs? Yeah. Sweet. <laughs> now, okay. Share, we'll share later. Now think about this for a second. You gave your dad information on how to go have that experience. Take it one step further. You right now had an 83% chance better of getting him to go get those ribs because you were helping him get there. You were a person of peer-to-peer -peer connection to your dad. That's what we're starting to really pull layers of information off of for our clients, and we're literally showing them from a social mobile standpoint how socially gifting somebody, giving something to a social connection, is 83% more effective than putting an ad on TV, a direct mail piece, an email blast, an SMS text. If I give you something, or you give your dad something, or Hugh gives me something, at the end of the day, I've got an 83% chance of doing that interaction, taking advantage of that financial officer, for that brand, for that business, than any other form of marketing out there. And social gifting is gonna be a lot of what you hear about when it comes to mobile, because when you're mobile and you get an offer, that mobile offer can be within a GPS range of where you can redeem that. It can be within a time of day where you can redeem it, or it could be from a friend of yours that has a peer-to-peer -peer influence. Not so, to interrupt. But <laughs> um, so well, we did talk about barbecue stuff. We did. So one of the other topics they wanted to <laughs> so uh, I want to introduce everyone to Lawrence Griffin, Griffin and uh, Lawrence you and I connected what a year and a half, two years ago, something like that. So um, at the time I was um, uh, on the marketing side of things. I was I was really trying to dig into this whole coupon. Uh, I knew um, I had the misfortune when I was at the time of being like the, the king of coupons at uh, at P and G and I gotta tell you, from a marketing standpoint, it's brutal. You don't want to do it, but uh, it drives the business, and it's extremely powerful um, motivation to, to to save money. I mean, everyone everyone is susceptible to that. Uh, so the price sensitivity exists uh, in every person here. So, but uh, anyway, Lawrence uh, is is uh, he leads sample sync, and they are kind of on the edge of doing something that I told these guys. And, so they you your level set, um, something about how one eight the coupons that are eighteen are all retailer specific, the other seven eights are cross retailer, and uh, we're waiting to find something to crack that other eight to seven percent of the pie. And I said, uh, I suggest that you might be one of them. So I should tell you more about what you're doing. How does that So um, I think it's, it's important to First, understand sort of what's out there. Um, so I, I, I worked for Procter and Gamble for 11 years as a senior.
cards are playing with both marketing strategies. So majority of of uh, majority of my knowledge in terms of couponing sort of comes from that environment. Um, a lot of folks that are that are out there doing it right now are using four one of four methodologies. You're either printing coupons from your computer, right? You're using promo codes, which is what Cellfire and Groupon are doing. Uh, it's downloading the offer to a frequent shopper card. Cellfire is doing that as well. And there are a lot of, a lot of folks that have caught on to that. Um, or you're making some attempts to do something scannable and you're doing that you're using 2D QR barcode. A company called Cold Broker is doing that with Target. Which you've been watching the news, it's failed miserably. Um, Cellfire made some attempts to, to do it with uh, JC Penny, uh, but that didn't work either. Uh, and they also tried to do it with uh, Sears Kmart, and after that program, Sears Kmart balanced and they were doing anything more with everything. So, um, and then there's another company called Rocket Bucks, who made some attempts to do the same thing. So the scandal with 7-Eleven, uh, 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 I think they, they leveraged the beverage brand with uh, PepsiCo. And again, that, that was sort of short lived They were all making attempts to use QR barcodes. The challenge is... How it, It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. But, but, the, but the challenge is, point of sale machines universally are not set up to accept they're set up to accept universal UPCA barcodes and more recently data bar, right? So the challenge for a guy like me is how do you create, well, before I go on that, so we have one little piece to it. Conventional wisdom says that a barcode is only so many dots per inch. And at the right resolution, you put on a piece of paper that's going to scan, right? Well. Conventional wisdom said you should be able to take those dot prints and stick them on a phone screen, and at the right resolution, it should also scan. Well, that that's true. It, it actually will. But this is the rub. The resolution on an iPhone screen is very different from the resolution on a Nokia, which is very different from the screen resolution on your little sister's little cheap phone, right? So my IP is less about, it really has nothing to do with being able to scan the PCA barcode. It has everything to do with the unique way that I present it to the phone, which makes it scannable from any phone. Smartphone, cheap phone, it doesn't matter. You could bring up one of my coupons on, a, on an iPhone, it'll still scan. We don't need an app for that. It's all about how it's presented. Looks like an image, but it's not an image. Are you that company with the circle? Is that the one that below like the recent Uh oh no. Oh which one? But but you know <coughs> and the, the second the second piece of software causes that barcode to self-destruct right after it scans. That's important because both CPGs and retailers experience some estimated 100 to $300 million in coupon fraud annually. It's an accepted number. If we're able to shrink that number, we don't have to move any more units than they moved last year, but we just shrink that fraud number, we've still spoken directly to their bottom line. So how it's presented to the phone allows for maximum scalability. That's the first value right. Second, the, the fraud protection. It goes away right after it's scanned. But third, and this is really important now, if you do the, the text to frequent shopper card, it requires augmentation and a lot of back-end changing of a retailer's point of sale system. If you use a QR barcode methodology, again, it requires the same. A lot of change in augmentation of a given retailer's 
point of sale system. Even with promo codes, same thing, same deal. We are plug and play. Period. You come to my office tomorrow, I can send my coupons to your phone. You can walk around the corner to CBS and actually use it. I don't have any deals with CBS. Fraud protection, plug and play, scalability. We leverage the normal UPC barcodes and data. And you know, the interesting thing is that uh, being never get the information about the redemption until much, much later. Yep. Because it's going through a clearing house. And there are two major clearing <coughs> out there. Um, but uh, you don't know, so you just have, uh, you have a much longer delay, you don't know who the person is that redeemed it, or even necessarily where they redeemed it. You can, you can get to the where to some degree if you pay more money, but it's, is it isn't really worth it in the end. It's, so, um, but then being able to tie to an individual who redeemed the code does what we call closing the loop on on the advertising that you are sending to that person to the actual purchase mechanism. And the reason why, you know, uh, the reason why Lawrence and I originally connected, the reason why I was connecting with other people who were doing the same type of stuff, was because connecting that loop is the power of, of marketing in the sense that now you have an idea of the message you sent, the way they responded, and the actual purchase that occurred after that. And you can connect that all with one individual and then do that and analyze that across uh, a mass market. And, and it cannot be done yet today. I mean, the people the people who are doing that are like the, the online only retailers like Amazon and, and eBay because they know exactly what you're doing because they're following all your clicks, right? And they can't follow your clicks in the real world, really, but this is kind of this gets you to that one that major gap that we have today and allows people to trace you and find out what it is that you know uh, if we believe at Gillette that you know you are a um, uh, performance seeker in terms of shaving, you know, and we send you the advertising that we believe is going to be consistent with that uh, psychographic profile, and and then but we don't see you purchase. And then we change the advertising to someone who is more like uh, image seeking, and suddenly we purchase, and we realize that we have even the wrong profile. And that we don't, people don't know how to do that yet. Today. So that's that was that was our my initial interest, but just as an interest by itself, without the whole market there and on top of it, street power. So so I think I think one of the the from a strategy standpoint. You know, we, I launched the company in the summer of 2009 um, with just a one-store test in some Italy um, You know, wrote the business plan, won some business plan competitions, gave me enough capital to, to do about you know, a couple of years of R&D to really develop opportunities. Unilever came to me and said, you know, we want to we know what the consumer adoption rate is. So, we did some little one-store tests, at least so I thought it was insignificant, right? Although they paid us for it, still just one store. In New Jersey, Hobo can adopt, right? At a shop right now. Wasn't even thinking about PR. Just wanted to get the data back from that, from that test. <coughs> the first two weeks, the first two weeks, oh, it, it, that summer, the Mobile Marketing Association conference was in New York, right? And Cell Fire was like, you know, all in the house. The first two weeks of the of the test, it goes viral. Wall Street Journal, Global, New York Times, Business Week, Washington Post, and a hundred other publications around the world as far as Russia, France, London. I have people calling me from Seoul, Korea, talking about how can we launch this. It was just absolutely nuts. It's, and, and at this point, the PR is taking on a life of its own. You know, books, magazines, whatever. 
what I had to do at that point. Oh, and of course, you know, everyone from General Mills to Ad Exec from, you know, all the major CPG companies actually secret shopping us at the shop right to see exactly if it, if it, if it was actually true or not. So I had to make a decision after all that inertia was created to do one of two things. I could do what my competitors were doing, Yowza, all those other guys, which was let's kind of create something that kind of works and market the hell out of it to build a brand. Let's just get it out there. We don't know if it's good or not, but let's just get it out there and make a name. Or I could back up, sit back, reevaluate, redevelop, make it better after take the data from the test, and then sit quietly while everyone else did their thing, form my strategic alliances that would uh, put me in a position to become a juggernaut in what I'm doing in 2011. Of course, it's the first thing I decided to do. <coughs> Right? So, where you have companies like Cellfire who have uh, sort of a couple of relationships, one with uh, Safeway or in, in, uh, yeah, it's something, something, whatever. Yeah. Um, we just signed a, we just signed a deal with eight multinational grocery store chains. That means that if anyone does mobile couponing or digital coupons in those stores, it will only be us, exclusively. There's also some stuff that's going to launch with Nokia, France, and a few other folks I won't even mention right now. So I think that, um, you know, whenever you're doing stuff like this, you really have to sometimes not be so concerned with what everyone else is doing and, and react, but you sometimes have to sit back and be more proactive. It's a little bit of a risk, of course, because you know you want that first mover advantage, but at the end of the day, what you really don't want is to get out there and fail miserably because it wasn't well thought out. So I think. Uh I don't think anyone believes that any of these guys up here are doing small things, right? So, uh, and, and they're not. So it's essentially, if you know, the, the, the space is, uh, there are so many people in this space now. And the, the thing I wanted to say was that uh, I was t talking to someone else about um, this, uh, an article that came out about uh, innovation and how uh, our, the impressions in the U.S. have all fostered Innovation. And you know, we were talking about you know, a year and a half ago, a year and a half ago, you know, a few years ago, a few years ago, a few years ago, you know, it's like that was like at the rock bottom point almost of the or the place where everyone realized that it was going to suck for a while. Um, and uh, so, so this is a uh, so this is really kind of uh, another example of what's, what's happening. You know, the, the depression really creates. Innovation out of uh, somewhat out of necessity and out of the fact that you know people are really kind of reassessing what they want to do and they get to an area that really means something to them. Uh, and uh, and you can see that these guys are you know, really thought through these things now and the strategy and, and, and kind of like measured risk. So uh, I really I wasn't expecting that as a theme to come out, but I think it's really interesting to hear that across all three of these guys. So I have a bunch of Questions for these guys, but uh, and I'll intersperse them in between. But I'd rather open the floor for you guys. And as you guys have you guys ask a question, you know, if, if you don't need me anymore, then, then I'll go back and answer some questions. <laughs> <laughs> Is there, there any questions that you guys have for right now? Otherwise, I'll go back to my um, Batch one number three. Okay. <laughs> um, you were talking about how your your uh, product will. You, you say I go into Sears or what have you. And I've got my QR code and I call the code reader really just set up their VPC codes. Are they observed if I roll with my phone like yellow, here's my code. And my resolution is different than their screen reader one. 
can they still punch in the code? I get what you're saying about how they do it with self destruct, so I don't just go use it all over the place, but is that something that they can do to just manually punch in the number? Or, or obviously the number of keys, but let's stand you can see code there is. Yeah, but, so I'm, ask the question again so I make sure I understand. Okay. You're saying, so you were talking about how like, a lot of phones have different resolutions. So say I've got my droid. I walk into a safe way and I go, hey, here's my coupon. And I pull it up. And my screen resolution is not compatible with the resolution they need to scan the barcode. You tell them I want to buy? No, no, just in general. Because yeah. you're saying how yours combats that because it's always at a standard resolution. But it's not because it's a standard resolution. It's another reason. Okay, but but now say say I, it's just in general. Now if I have like a you see code, obviously there's a number they can punch in, correct? Is there sure. Any got, I mean, on, on the bottom of, of, a, of the UPCA barcode, sure, this is 13, 14 digit number that you can start. Now, so they they could do it and say if there's a UPC code, I have one. Obviously, with a QR code, they can. Correct. Is there any kind of uniformity with that where? Say I roll in, I'm like, ah, I lost my phone, I'm gonna dig out my old Motorola Razor phone because I want to buy a new one. Here's the image of the the QR code and the, you know. Are you talking about like a backup system basically? Yeah, or just something where like they can yeah. oh hey, this the reader's not reading it, is there kind of any kind of uniformity where if the reader doesn't take it because my phone's too old, they can punch in code or something? Or Yeah, you know what? I have no idea on that. I mean I but what what I can tell you is um, you know, just in terms of what, what we do or how we do it, um, it in terms of the point of self machines and the, and the standards that they have, I mean, it, 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 it works. You know, as far as QR barcodes, you know, typically, really, QR barcodes are really designed to transfer information, right? So, in Western Europe and Asia for a long time, and, and even still, and it's starting to come more, more and more prevalent here. You would have a QR barcode maybe attached to a, a gap ad in a magazine or at a bus stop. You take your barcode reader, which most of you probably have the software on your phone, and you don't, you can download it from the internet. And it reads that QR barcode and it transfers the information from the ad to your phone. So that's typically or traditionally what they do. So like in your case, you're generating, you can see, so in your case, the, you, the codes you generate would have the 13, 14 digits below it anyway, so if there was a scanner issue, they could type the numbers in because you're using a standard UPC instead of better resolution. <coughs> yeah, they, they could just type the numbers in. Because um, half the time you go to the store, every time I go to the grocery store, at least one item doesn't scan. They right. just type it in on the UPC. Sure, so if there's some issue with their scanner, yeah, they can just type it in. How do you deliver, how do you deliver the coupons to your clients? Or... How do your clients live with their coupons to their clients? I mean, what is is it a magazine? Is it an email? Do they, do they how, they, how do I get how do I get your coupon on my phone? Good question. Of course, there are multiple methodologies that you would use to get it. So, for example, we've done programs where we had very attractive models walking around a grocery store with a shirt on, with the brand taking up the entire shirt, and a text code that says text this number to get three dollars off the oil of Olay. So it's a walking a walking uh, FSI, right? It attracts your attention, all right? There you go. Um, so you using texting those still? Well well there's well, that's one way. Another another way of doing it is what I call a digital FSI. So imagine you see a, a banner ad online like you would see uh, let's say at a Yahoo site. But with this banner ad it has a window where you type in your phone number, click get coupon, and instantaneously that coupon shows up on your phone. Oh, so you enter the number into you, you enter the number, and that, the that number gets what kind of information do you do you keep? In other words, do you do you keep my phone number, the type of phone that I have, who I am, where I am, All of it. what city, All of it. meaning whatever, my whatever, name as well? Whatever whatever we capture. What well, so, can you catch? Can you capture my name from a scan? Well, well, that's so. That's the third methodology. If you go to a web portal and you sign up, right, to get offers on a repeated basis, then of course we're going to capture all your demographic information. Otherwise, it's only a phone number that we're capturing. Can I opt out? 
can I, I don't want I want it I want your coupon, but I don't want you sending me stuff all the time. Yeah, or is that is, an option? Yeah, our our model is more of a pull model as opposed to a push. Okay. So if you wanted to get alerts, you'd have to actually tell us that. Right, nice. So it's just just to elaborate a little bit on your question as well, or your uh, you know, we do the same thing, and it's basically one of the methodologies to get that barcode. So, for us, uh, you know, our, our delivery mechanism is a QR code. Uh, it seems to be the most ubiquitous uh, two-dimensional barcode on the market, and that's why we're, we're kind of known with it. But to us, it's just an image. It's just a two-dimensional image. It could be whatever wins, right, Betamax or, or PHS. Um, and so what we're able to do is it's a different delivery system well, which is we will, you know, put a QR code on that big gap ad, and what we're doing for companies is they will scan that gap ad, enter their email, right, say thank you or or not. It's a, it's always up to the company how much information they want from that consumer. Sometimes they care, sometimes they don't. But once they hit submit, they actually get a UPC code. Now the resolution question. Is the million dollar question, is it going to work with their scanners? Typically, yes. Uh, but there's always that number. But right? again, it's a UPC. It's a UPC. So, when we work with the company, they say, hey, this is the coupon that we want to give away. Here it is. You, uh, we upload it to our system. You know, we, we create all the content on our system. So, we create that landing page. We ask the questions or not. They hit submit. The next page they get is now they can walk up to that consumer, and it's just another delivery mechanism, you know, to get that new PC because we have, you know, Lawrence is right. Uh, QR code for the most part is the transfer information. So the way we view it is, it's the quickest, you know, once you've done it, it's the quickest way to get that information to you. It's very direct. It, uh, you know, it, it kind of trumps a little bit of the text, but there's a more of an interaction, a wait and see, and the way we kind of view it, the same thing with the more of a pull, and we, we like to call it it's a permission based marketing as opposed to an interruption based marketing. Right? So, um, yeah, there's a million ways to do it. You know, the QR code can coexist with those UPC codes, you know, as a delivery mechanism. Going further, the QR codes, are you seeing an increase in adoption rates across all three main players from Blackberry? Blackberry, for example, which you would you consider probably the, you know, on, on the lower end as far as uh, interaction and, and, and being innovative with their, their browsers and their, their OS, you know, uh, Blackberry Messenger, BBM 5.0 or greater, actually comes pre-installed with a great marker, you know, so the adoption rate is coming, uh, and Blackberry works across, you know, all, all three platforms. The adoption rate Droid's really done a great job. You know, Verizon uses you know QR codes. And they brought a lot of uh, attention to it. And, you know, obviously marketers are uh, gravitating towards it. But I think the adoption rate. If you just look at the market where it's going as far as smartphones, they're they're it's it's, a, it's an app. You know, so uh, Red Blaze is a perfect example where it's, it's a, an app that you that reads UPC code as well as QR codes in most apps. That read QR code talks Let's, uh, we were talking a little bit about uh, the information that's available for people uh, and opting out. This is kind of, everyone has probably read about the whole do not track uh, um, trend that's happening with the, with the government. They're saying, you know, it's kind of like a do not call, uh, but if you don't want any information uh, uh, be collected on you, uh, that you can sign up for do not track. So, uh, tell people about kind of like what is the information that's being used, and I mean, sometimes information always be it's a weapon. Uh, it can be information, information you can either use as a weapon or you can use a lot of fashion. So, so tell people a little bit about like how what information you guys are collecting and how that actually creates good for the consumer, but then. Also, kind of flip it on your side and say, you know, if someone wanted to use it, this is what might happen. So, uh, we're going to put Chris on it. Oh, 
percentage of people that leave their wallets at home and then and then the percentage that actually go back to get their wallets versus the percentage of people that forget their phones at home. Yeah. And then they and they roll well, back to their house. Was a study, I forgot the numbers yeah. a while ago, but uh, it was pretty incredible. People would rather lose their wallet than lose their phone. And yeah, you know, that uh, shows how personal that is. Cell phone is, is, is missing and it's reported uh, like the next hour. Yeah. 
um, versus this, uh, well, uh, your credit card or like the your best driver's license, social security card. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. so here's the thing. Next question. Just, just, just not this. Just one second. If you lose your iPhone and you've got your own wallet in there, every gift card you've ever got, the, the second you lose it, to so the second you uh, change your password and download it on your new phone, it stores all the gift cards plus the current balance stores. So talk about the value of putting your wallet on your phone. So sorry. Yeah, right. My question is directly for you. It seems like it's doing a long thing. Why would not you sign up for it? You're getting free stuff out of using the brands that you're committed to. Um, how can that adversely affect the brand by having <coughs> almost everything that you buy from that brand now is discounted? With all their <coughs> price points, their value that they're giving you. And I guess what I, I recently read that Groupon had an adversely affect your brand over time by providing customers a discount so they don't want to pay full price for that anymore. So I guess the question is, if I can get a discount on anything through Juno Wallet, why would I ever want to pay full price for it again? Can't that lower the value of a brand over time? Totally agree, but here's the thing. They're giving you a reloadable mobile gift card on your phone, and they're giving you a small amount, $10, which gets your burger to beer. But now watch this. When you leave the bar, you have the choice to reload that gift card, and the value of time and money is what that business is getting. Even if they discount it, you prepay, let's say $20 for a $30 value card inside the Juno wallet, right after 24 hours after being here, they now have your $20 in hand, and they now have time and value of money built in, plus they know they've got you as a customer coming back at some point in the future. So you know what? There's, there's a lot of things that we're doing inside of Juno wallet that are one-to-one -one values, and then there's a value card which we created and patented the trademark, where you can buy multiple uh, value cards where you can pay $20 for a $60 card, but over time that $60 will erode back to what you pay for it, so it gives you a time reason to go in. So, yes, I, I think. They track all the metrics. Metrics, yeah. You know, demographics, male, female, all kinds of dashboard information. Do you the answer to your question is as a business, you have to be careful about discounting, but you can never be too careful about rewarding. If, you, if I reward a customer, I would much rather reward as a business a customer than somebody that is not a customer. Well, well, that, that was, that, wasn't there a whole trend going on when Groupon first came out where several businesses that actually got a lot of Groupon coupons redeemed? They started going out of business. Yeah, well, well the issue really is around uh, how do you perceive um, there's a price sensitivity thing, and marketers are always concerned about, you know, um, having people always seek a deal. And there are people who always seek a deal. It doesn't matter who, who you are. These are the people who are out there on the web looking for coupons all the time, and there are places where they can go. But that's not the majority of people. The majority of us don't have time to the mail all, always, or we're just not that concerned about it. Yeah, so, the, uh, but the value of then uh, of that ends up being not around this discount that is received. It's considered to be a marketing spend. So you, uh, so for instance, uh, uh, I know uh, I know a girl who is a uh, marketing manager at um, um, not Wildfire, but it's the they do uh, stir crazy pizza. So they have a stir crazy place where you go and you like you know uh, you grab you grab all the stuff that you want. And they stir fry for you. Uh, so anyway, very spanning very quickly. They did two Groupons, and basically what it does is she they basically consider it like they would consider advertising. You know, instead of instead of placing an ad in the, the Tribune or something like that, and so they're saying, okay, we spent um, forty thousand dollars, fifty thousand, whatever it was, in terms of the funding of that uh, of that Groupon, and but we are now bringing people into our restaurant. They experience it and they have a good time and then you get the loyalty. Yeah, you know, that's a that's a whole big conversation, right? Because there's a lot of negatives. <coughs> if you're let's say you're in a real salon and uh, you know, there's a big group on and there's seven thousand people that just signed up for this nail salon at twenty bucks and you you know, you call and you said, Hey, I just got the group on, uh, I'd like to get in. You sure I was December of two thousand eleven time. Right? <laughs> 7,000 is way too much for a small amount to actually handle. So that's a big conversation. That I, under, I understand that. But I guess my point, what I'm trying to get to specifically is Juno Wallet gives every person walking down the street an immediate coupon, a 
time logging a gift card, gift card or a discount or something. So to the point where um, I'm at GM knows I'm here, or let's say Yahtzee knows I'm looking for a place to eat, I'm automatically going to go in there. It's an instant ratification based on uh, how I'm here. Uh, I get that instant coupon based on my location. Yeah. Big difference because the coupon's going to expire. A gift card will not So they know that if they give that to you and it's on your mobile device, one day they've got a customer they can find. Because it's stored value, it's real cash. Mm -hmm. So I'll tell people a little bit about kind of like uh, the value of the coupon because you know, people are like, well, if, we can, if, if you give everyone a coupon all the time, they're just going to wait until the coupon comes out and then they can buy it, right? But obviously the industry is, is not. The reason why coupons drive so much business is, is not because it destroys the value of the brand, it's, it's more to do with that. So. Yeah, so, um, so coupons aren't obviously just about redemption. It is a, a form of advertising, right? So, for, first rule, what you don't want, you don't want someone who's already loyal to your brand to get a coupon. That's what you don't want, right? So, you know, there's some sort of strategies that you kind of deploy to, to sort of deter that from happening. I think we have some effective ways of doing that in San Francisco, uh, given that it's, it's digital in nature and how we collect information. But the, the point is, is that it isn't just about uh, redemption, but, but really a lot of it really is about driving trial, uh, driving awareness. Um, so to, to hope in hopes of building brand loyalty and getting consumers who are buying this to buy that. So there's, uh, you know, as we all know, like when you're marketing something, there's a, pro a product or service, there's three things that you need to do in order to make it successful. You need to get awareness, you need to get trial, and then you need to get repeat. Right? If you get those three things, then you're done. That's it. So, and along those lines, so the life cycle is, the life cycle is, um, so there's, there's, there's awareness, and then awareness drives trial, and then trial drives purchase, and then purchase drives repurchase, and then repurchase drives uh, uh, loyalty. And then the last and final piece, which is really the holy grail, is advocacy. Because loyalty is really not where you want to end up. You want consumers to become an advocate of your brand. Because once they become an advocate, it's a done deal. Because they're selling you for you. Take what he's saying is 100% correct. In fact, advocacy, take that even a little bit further and say, how does somebody become an advocate of Yahtzee? Well, if I, as a friend, can give all my friends a gift card to Yahtzee, coming from me, a friend of theirs, that's an advocate. That I'm actually saying, hey, here's a gift. I'm going to leave a gift for you. I'm going to leave a beer for you at Yahtzee. Go try it. And well, cheers to all of you. <laughs> I, think the, I think the overall point that I'm making is, in terms of the three of us, and, and where our companies sort of dwell in that life cycle, right? We, we really sort of dwell between between uh, two sort of areas at the beginning and at the end. Because really what this is really all about is scale. That's why anybody would pay us to do anything, to drive scale, period. As they say, Sure. So you have so you have awareness, which can be done through um, you know, the coupon itself. Um, there's a consideration, which you know uh, Danny can do that, right. which is basically you're aware of it and you want to know more, right? Well, how do you get more? Well, it's really easy. You snap a picture, you get that information transferred, right? And very quickly, whether it's a video or if it's a website or uh, or just a phone number. So that, and then once you get to once you get consideration and someone's ready to make that purchase, you get into the purchase loyalty aspect, which is you know both couponing and, and loyalty. And then of course you ultimately want we all want advocacy, which is 
where you, know, you look at Apple and Google, and they don't have to do a whole lot in the marketing front because everyone, people who you know, purchase their product are loyal and they are advocates, and advocacy creates your own market. Well, I, I think you also need to uh, kind of the group on the point. Uh, like Groupon, when they first started having these issues with businesses going out, because all of a sudden 7,000 people get a nail job and they're one, they drive 30 miles to come there and get their nail done once and never come back. They start, that's when they started introducing all the local features so you can now public, you can advertise only locally, and now they've actually turned it around. So, like, uh, like today, there's a Groupon for Incline Spirits down the road where I go to regularly, and I wasn't told about it, even though I'm just down the street. So they, they obviously banked on the fact that I already knew about it to not offer me uh, $40 worth of Incline Spirits for 20 bucks. Someone else told me about it, and I bought three of them. So, <laughs> yes, right. And you know, so that's what they also started time bombing them and lots of other things. So yeah. some of the businesses <coughs> hope that they take your money away and then you don't use it before it expires, which again is the difference between uh, you know, a gift card you got to be ready for business. I mean, really, like, you think about uh, all these people out there who, will, let's say, have a product and they go to the uh, Walmart's um, vendor fair where you have, uh, it's, a, it's a speed dating for Walmart. And I don't know if you've read about this, but so what happens is, uh, I mean, not everyone's a craft or P&G. So what they do is they bring in people who have got their own products, they want to sell, and you get 10 minutes with them. And you do your pitch, and that's it. And, but... What can happen is if Walmart decides to order from you, it can destroy a company, just like Groupon. Right? If you're not sufficiently prepared for the volume that's going to happen, then you want shame on you. I, I, I have no sympathy for the people who have done Groupon and haven't researched what the impact of their business could be. Because you know what? That's like it's like it's like putting a PR announcement out there, having it come out uh, on, on the uh, going viral, and then you're not being able to deliver on what you said that you were going to do. In this yeah, but that's like saying. Group on, group on down, group on. Plus, remember, Groupon was only two years old, which means no one knew what kind of reaction they're going to get from people. Right. It, it, there was just not enough it information to follow a trend. Yeah, it's probably so, the Groupon guy overselling to him, marketing like crazy to him, saying all these great things. It's basically like the, you know. These are the guys. These are the guys. The guys that dropped with the guys. Other guys. <laughs> <laughs> the guys that fell, those are the pioneers. You is a group we're learning, we're learning from their failures, yeah. you know, and it's unfortunate, but but, but that's what happened. I mean, no, you're, you're these right. guys there's, failed, there's and we're learning like, from them. There's some, there's some people, you, yeah, they just look at your group, group on effect was not always known. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but tell us, um, I wanted you guys to share some very specific um, success stories. Uh, and ones, I mean, whether you talk about results, which you can great. Just talk about you know a story with um, with the company and what what the give to us and sort of like you know what was the situation what was the problem the situation what did you do and how did it end up you know so you want to tell us sure, sure. Uh, you can talk about the you know, one of our biggest clients is a uh, the, the Tribune uh, uh, company which is obviously the Chicago Tribune and all their you know, twelve other publications and all that you know. Uh, one of the big problems in print, obviously, is you know, loss of uh, ad revenue, <coughs> loss of uh, circulation. And so they have been really trying to experiment and see how they can you know, uh, get that, that number at least to stop, uh, you know, stop the bleed, right, or, or get it back up. So they're experimenting with different uh, technologies. So we started working with them back. April, and they started doing a, we did an experiment with them to see if the QR codes actually worked and how, how big the audience was. So uh, we did a big giveaway, you know, just to see what the, uh, the reach of the QR codes actually, actually was. Uh, the only thing that they had to measure against was text messages. So their text messaging was... Now, I'm going to give specifics, but uh, the, the text message wasn't as big as I thought it was. Uh, but at the same time, once we did this ad, they did a half page ad for four days in a row. They gave away opening day cup tickets, as you probably saw them, or somebody made. Uh, uh, 
But they give away, you know, so it's very enticing, and they give away daily prizes. Uh, and we were, you know, this is one of our big initial projects that we did. And so we were pretty nervous as far as what the, what the reach was. And, so, and, you know, we said, well, what success, you know? And they said 700 is what we'll get from a text message. Since then, they've been able to really sell their big clients, and this is their, their targeting first and foremost of their big clients, enhancing their ads. These guys are spending four or five to up to twenty thousand dollars for these full page ads. Uh, so this is a big upsell for them. So what they're able to do with, with this type of product is really deliver a message, and again, it's going back to that message is. A video, it could be additional information. Email capture is probably one of the biggest benefits of this type of technology that they've been able to leverage. And really, the measurability of you know being able to really track their print campaigns and tell their, their clients, you know, this is how much traction you're getting, how many emails did you get off of your last ad? We don't know. How much business did you do? We're not sure. You know, as a direct correlation to what you're spending with us. So this is a big push, and you'll see this pretty big coming next year. We're signing a big agreement that to really provide this across the board to all the 1,000 sales sales agents. Uh, and this is going to be a big push for them. They see this as a, as a way to really recapture some of that ad revenue. Our initial experiment was really a huge success for them. So they see the value of moving we'll forward in a big way, so we we'll probably see it more. And, and the biggest value really is, you know, it comes back to the, the value of what that consumer is going to get. You know, some of the fails, you know, in a sense, they tried some editorial stuff, and it became very static very quickly. You know, first day, it's like a, the Summer Fest guy was one of the big QR codes on the car. Page, everyday paper, you know, we saw those numbers go like this, like that, right? Because they're getting the same thing every day. So the same people are going to scan that same QR code that we already got it, got it yesterday. So what they learned from that experiment was uh, they need to act, you know, they need to offer real value. You know, it's, it's not as easy, right?
you learn more about it and you get a video on, on what, what it does, and then when they finish the video, uh, RX gives you a coupon to go ahead and feed them. You know? so, and then it blows up after the video. <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> then we all go home for the Okay, let's go take a vacation. So, uh, Lawrence, you talked about your test out in the uh, Kobo. Uh, whether it was that test or uh, or one was found afterwards, uh, tell us a little bit more about
went to an airport in New York, downloaded, saw the hotspot, called us up, and this holiday season, Priceline is going to one-up Travelocity, give away $75 gift cards, and they're going to be part of a million-dollar piece of campaign where they're giving away a million dollars, $75 gift cards, to college kids all around the country as part of the ultimate spring break gift card, which will run from January to March. So what we said is we said, okay, we can give away gift cards. What else can we do? Well, if you download Juno Wallet now, we're actually giving away $5 million cash, hard cash, cool hard cash, it's for you to literally refer Juno Wallet to your friends. In the next couple of days, you'll see an update where literally there's a button in the middle that says earn cash, or I mean, I'm sorry, earn gifts, and you can literally invite your friends, and every one of your friends that downloads Juno Wallet, you get 50 cents of Juno credits. If you got 1,000 friends, that's $500 cash, Juno credits, that you can use by any gift card of your choice. So the, the big thing that we've learned in 341 days as a company is we're all about social gifting, whether it's us giving it to our users, our users giving it to their friends, our users getting rewarded for uh, going, becoming a fan of Facebook. Social gifting has an 83% higher redemption rate than any other form of marketing out there. You can run an ad on TV, you can put an ad on the floor, you can do a mailer, you can do an email flash, you can do any form of marketing you want, but when it comes from me to my friend Hugh, or from you to you, you know, to your buddy Pete or whoever, or from your wife to you, or from you to your sister, or from you to your father who's in Pittsburgh eating burgers and ribs right now, at the end of the day, when it's peer-to-peer -peer marketing, that is the ultimate, that, that's what you were just talking about, that's evangelism. But it's, it's even beyond evangelism. It's not saying go try it. It's, hey, I left you a beer at the bar. you got 10 days to go try it. Download it right now. Big dog, store it in your phone. You're, at, you're in front of the neighborhood nine days from now, and you get a notification. Hey, that beer that your dad just left you is sitting there at a bar. You're about to unwind it the other day. Tell me how you do it. I can't take that Chris, I want to ask you the same question that a uh, parent of a bachelor or a bachelor of two. <laughs> how do you, as, we as you're walking out... Should you not be able to see how good looking we are? <laughs> <laughs> how, do, how, how does a person at the airport get that um, they see an ad. We did actually use QR code, but we also did tiny URL. We found, don't take us wrong, the tiny URL was work, work a lot better for more people. Sure. Yeah, yeah, it's more, yeah. and plus it was like, you know, punching in 12 digits. We, so, do, we do the same thing. We, we understand there's a bridge to the gap. Right? Yeah, the gap there, right? not everyone's QR code reader. Not everyone has a QR every, code reader. Every QR code, you know, as a rule, I think, and it's not just our company, but as a rule, it should always have an alternative way to get to that message, which is, you know, the same thing, there's a lot of mistakes out there, right, where you don't instruct, you know, what, what is this jigsaw bucket, it's an internal UPC, I mean, it's a new UPC, right, it's not for me, well, it's actually, we have an email come in, saying, hey, I kept taking a picture of it, people thought they could just take a picture without yeah. having a QR reader, so we have people sending us photos, I mean, oh man, it was a story, man, we're in the Get those all. Isn't it, sir? I got like, we got our right. comments at Juno Wallet email box. They filled with yeah. all these pictures Absolutely. of the app. Good news is we were able to email them the gift card through the email, yeah, but absolutely. it was hysterical because I'm like, oh man, that didn't work too well. <laughs> well, we, you know, if you're ever going to do a QR code implementation, uh, always include a short URL right underneath to say this is an alternative way to get to it because there's a lot of phones out there. I mean, this is in its infancy. You know, uh, mobile is. About the skyrocket, but you know, QR code is one of our niches. But we we understand that not everybody's gonna get it, right? So you gotta you gotta have an alternative way to get that same message. And it's one of the values that we try to you know. You know our, our goal really as a company is to make sure that these companies do good implementation. Right? There's a ton of bad implementation. Yeah, we it's very easy. To, there you go. <laughs> there's, there's, it's very easy to do bad implementation. It's, it's like when you go. Super to, easy. <laughs> Sports Illustrated, you, 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 uh, you scan the, the whatever type, whatever four point six from stickers. Yeah, you know, you get there and you, you scan it, and you're looking up your you know, three point seven inch screen, and it's a full size site. I like bad that implementation. Okay. You know, make sure the O'Hare, uh, the, the passageway between the CTA and uh, and terminals and the opening walkway there, they have. Pictures of the constellations. Yeah, yeah. You seen that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you have constellations. They have uh, they have the Windows tag there. Yeah. And so they have this you know, huge beautiful print, and they got this like corner here that tells you more about it. And you take a picture of that tag, and it takes you to a site 
That's the exact same information as what it says right there on that print. Oh, and, like, so there's, and I'm like, why Why did you even bother? Because right. the, I, the concept is that uh, I should be getting something that I can't get. Worth right. scanning. Right. There, right? Something yeah. worth scanning. Yeah, something worth something scanning. Worth some some, some sort of additional value <coughs> information in this case. Well, absolutely. It has to, you know, there's, there's a few rules in the you know, you have to, the information you get when you, when you scan or you tax or you, you know, go to a certain URL, it's going to be relevant to what you just scanned. So if I scan that picture, it shouldn't talk about shoes, right? So talk about the picture, what's behind that picture. It should be something of value, right? And third, it needs to be mobile. Don't send somebody to a full-size site if you know there's, this is meant for mobile. They're not taking a picture with a with laptop. Which is what CRMS did. They sent you to their, their full scale Facebook yeah. fan page when if they just change the URL and to their yeah. mobile yeah. Facebook fan page, it becomes uh, much more readable. That was rule two. Places. Rule three is a short URL. Yeah. Well, you know, you need to give them a harder way to get there because uh, this is, you know, we're bridging a, a technology here where if this takes off great, if it doesn't, it doesn't, but you need to get them mobile. Give them content that is optimized for mobile. So that's a really good segue to the next question. So, you know, uh, then you talked about uh, response rate of more than 10x from what they what uh, the return was getting for uh, for their texting. Um, you know, uh, or as you're talking about how you know 40% rate redemption versus one and a half percent issue standard. And like when we were doing coupons, I mean we were looking at uh, Point, point one percent reduction type of deals, you know. So, uh, and then you were talking about eighty two percent, you know, um, success rate on, on social gifting. So these are all like extremely powerful numbers. So uh, I think uh, everyone is probably sold on the fact that you know, of course you're here and you all have phones, uh, and and it's very compelling. So let's talk about if someone here wants to actually. One of these three things. Um, give us an example of like kind of like that first step. Because you know what it's like, okay, I gotta, I'm not gonna come in and we're not gonna do like a national campaign first uh, first way. You know, it's like I don't have I don't have that kind of money, I don't have that kind of uh, pull of the upper management, whatever it is. So uh, tell us about kind of like that first engagement. You know, what does that look like? And maybe if you can some sort of ballpark estimate as to what the investment might be. So, uh, Chris, you want to start? I think at the end of the day, we're all paid for play. So everything that we do is on a paid for performance basis. When we go to a company like Priceline, they only pay when somebody downloads their offer. So we can push out $10 million, $75 gift cards, but until somebody actually at every <coughs> board in this room downloads their gift card, they pay for the download and then they pay for the redemption. So for Priceline, that's pure customer acquisition, paid for play. And our whole model, from a retailer standpoint, is paid for play. From a user standpoint, we ask people, make us your wallet, and we will show up value, and more value, and more value in that wallet. Real value, not something that expires in six months, something that never expires. And we're going to put so much value in that wallet that it actually represents a financial interest of yours. That, that when you start thinking in your head, what do I got in my pocket, you're going to start thinking, what do I got in my phone? And when we can get people to cross that chasm, when you can get people to start crossing that canyon, of what's in my wallet to what's in my phone's wallet, when you just start to get people to start thinking that way, then you get that whole tipping point. You get that whole massive change in human dynamic. But the way you start getting people to think about what's in my digital wallet, yeah, you can create a digital wallet, but if there's no value in it, if there's no money in it, if there's no reason to use it, then what good is it? It's a bunch of code on your phone. You download Journal Wallet. Has anyone downloaded it here? What was, how many gift cards did you get for downloading today? Come here. Yeah, what? Was that uh, 30, I think it was? Yeah. And how much, was, how much in value did you get? Oh, I haven't looked at that one. You know, I just did it today. Just now. $1,800. Yeah. 36 gift cards from a variety of retailers, all within 20 miles of this location. $1,800 worth of value on his phone. Whether you ever use it or not. <laughs> 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 yeah, exactly. But, but see, now, you know, now we're engaged. Oh, I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? The, uh, I mean, yeah, how many right. people here have, when you 
you're talking about that, I was thinking about how many people here have a Groupon wallet? Like, do you have stuff that you haven't redeemed in your Groupon yep. profile, and you go back there and you're like, you know what, I really need to go to that restaurant. It's like, I've been sitting there for a while. But, you know, the behavior has, uh, has been established, you know, and it's been paved. So I think that the, your chances of being able to move that behavior from online into to your phone, I think, are pretty good. It's great. Well, there's just a thing about the front of toes. I mean, I've got uh, $10 worth of golf balls in the driving range that expire at the end of December. Don't know that I'm going to get out of <laughs> 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 We have a value card which never expires. Our gift card, zero expiration. So you may not get there in December, but watch this. Groupon or some companies, I'm not going to say Groupon because it's not fair to them, but some companies will pitch a retailer and say, hey, Mr. Golf Ball Place, we're going to sell a ton of your stuff, but 80% is going to go and it's never going to be used, and they call that breakage. And, I, and we go to that same retailer and say, hey, that breakage is never good because now he spent 10 bucks and never experienced your business, it's going to be three times harder to get him back in. But isn't that Chris, free money? It's 1,900. Huh? But that's not only breakage. Breakage is oh, 1,000. Oh, oh, you have it? Yeah. This is free money. <coughs> no, 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 no. It's a term that means that something just, expired that they paid. No, open so it. Just, the retail is that right? Hey, but, but, it's, it's 1,900, not 1,800. Yeah. I apologize. <laughs> what the hell am I thinking about? <laughs> <laughs> think about this. Take a look the at the retail, list of places there. Like 10 bucks at a restaurant. is an establishing the loyalty and the repeat. No, I, I get that, but like I, I buy a Groupon, like you, like you, you bought the golf course. And you go, oh, man, I'm not, I'm not gonna make it. It's snowing. Like, are you holding that against the golf course? You holding that against yourself? But but they got your, they got your money and they got no ill will from you because because you're not gonna go. That golf course sucks. You're gonna go. Oh, you know what? I screwed up. I never went. Every time I drive by, I go, I go there, but I could have gone there last month. But are you any more likely to go now that the Groupon is no longer effective? Uh, it's in your head, though. I'm aware of it, or I didn't know about it before, which is one effect because uh, it's an advertising option. Yeah. Saying, saying what you were saying, does that mean that you that you try to push to your clients? Well, not push, but I guess you tell them that your best results will be um, um, a gift card versus a coupon. Well, we call them value cards when you increase the value of Which is the card. same thing, though. I mean, so you better know. Look, don't, don't put expiration dates. Exactly. Exactly. That's one thing that we preach is you never want that customer to feel like he lost anything. Who cares if it's next July and he redeems that $10 worth of golf balls at the golf course? They want, that golf course wants you in there July 1st right. or July 2nd or June or August. Or July 1st, or, 2010, or even three years. 20... You just move to California, you move back, and you still have that call to action that says come golf with us. Any customer acquisition is always good. And if you create value in somebody's wallet, trust me, one day before they die, maybe, usually, <laughs> they will use that value. Well, and most, most of the time, they're also banking on your not just going to come in and just of course. You're going to go in and spend thirty dollars, or you're going to come with a friend, which doubles the value. And now they've got people. We've got liquor companies this month giving away literally, shit you not, ten million dollars worth of free drinks in a variety of bars nationwide. And literally, they're giving away the drink because that eighty cents of vodka in a uh, martini glass, that eighty cents of vodka will get probably five times the revenue because he will go in with a buddy, or I will go in with my girlfriend, or you might go in with your father after you're eating a slab of ribs. And instead of one martini, you and your father have five martinis. And the one was free, the other four were paid for, and the money that was paid for out of the four martinis more than made up for the 80 cents they poured for a glass. So, I mean, it is amazing when you start looking into what happens when you give people some real value as an incentive to come to your business. What happens when you take breakage and throw it out of the conversation and say, I never want to lose a customer. I always want that customer to be acquired. I don't care if that customer comes in in three years. So, uh, it's a very powerful concept. Uh, and I love the, uh, the value that, that you're providing. So I think it's very compelling. Very compelling. So, um, so now let's talk about, like, so there's, there's the value of the loyalty card. That's something that kind of people are being used to. Uh, it's a new concept, but people kind of get out and get into it when they, uh, when they learn more about it. Everyone understands coupon. So it's a very old concept, people, that's almost the oldest time. So um, 
people here may not be able to kind of jump into it the same way that they can jump onto like, the wall thing, but you know, maybe instead of talking about um, I'm not sure it ran out of juice by now. Oh no, it's still going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you want to keep it on? No, you can stop it wherever you want. You've been holding it for so long. Thanks. Oh, I'm, I'm going to go to the bathroom. <laughs>